what is sustainability about and how do we do it? What's it all about? Sustainability begins in the 70s when environmental protection and improvement was being established as a, a global process of government. It was very clearly needed. Environment had, uh, had been neglected in economic development. It was clear we needed environmental protection agencies, we needed environmental regulation, we needed assessment processes for all kinds of development. And that was being established across the world. Uh, in many ways, it developed a momentum, however, where the environmental movement began a, a process of, of demeaning economic development as being something that uh, had to be stopped. Now, in, in the developed world, this, was, um, this had some momentum up, uh, particularly amongst uh, the biological community, if you like, who, who saw that there was far too much uh, growth in, in people and resource consumption and so on. It had to be all stopped. The planet wasn't big enough. However, this didn't really impress those in the third world who were clearly... Um, didn't have the benefits of economic development from the, the richer world. Uh, in fact, a b around a billion people were going to bed at night hungry. And this is not exactly um, as, uh, the kind of environment where you would suggest uh, that economic development uh, was not necessary. It clearly was. So the United Nations got together and said, we need to develop a new approach. They set up the Brundtland Commission, Madam Brundtland being the Prime Minister of Norway, and they had people from across the world uh, trying to solve this conflict between environment and development. And they came up with the term sustainable development as the solution to this issue. They suggested that economic development could actually improve the environment and environmental protection could improve the economy. But the two had to work together in new ways. Governments everywhere had to try and work out what it actually meant. By 1992, they had to report on how they were going uh, at, at achieving this understanding. The Australian government at the Rio conference uh, on environment and development uh, presented an approach. They called it ecologically sustainable development and it was informing all areas of government at that time. The, uh, the US government at that point began to say, this is nonsense. We're not going to proceed down this approach. Um, Ronald Reagan and, and subsequent presidents essentially said that sustainable development was not a solution that they would follow. It was, uh, it was a wrong turn for them and the Australian government tended to follow uh, with John Howard. Uh, so innovation in sustainability shifted to Europe, Canada, Japan, to local governments and to state governments who began to try and work out what this was all about. And what they found is that you really can't resolve this problem of uh, environment and economic development clashing unless you involve social development, unless you involve the triple bottom line of communities engaging in this and showing how they can solve this problem. Now, every family has to face a similar kind of situation. If you choose a place to live, you don't choose it entirely on the cost you want it to be a good environment and you want it to be a good community. And you bring those into the decision-making process. You would like it that all three could be resolved together and you try to make that happen as, as much as possible. That's the kind of approach that governments and companies and communities had then to try and work out on major issues of development. And clearly it was a, a way we had to go, but we weren't too sure how to do it. So from the mid-90s on, there's been a series of demonstrations and strategies developed to try and work out 
what sustainability means in practice. How do we get that middle area where the economic, the environmental and the social simultaneously are met and uh, are worked out together? Fundamental to understanding what sustainability is about is this diagram showing the different sectoral dimensions. The market, community and government all play a role in sustainability. And they have different roles. It's important to see that they are different and, you, and to see that they all need some kind of leadership, some kind of um, uh, innovation. But uh, the market, for example, is powerful in the way it can produce goods and services. And those goods and services are either sustainable or they're not. In other words, they can be improving the economy and the environment and communities at the same time, or they could be damaging. And businesses have to make that choice when they're producing them. Governments get involved in regulations and, and infrastructure. Uh, that's their key role. They don't actually set long-term directions, however. They tend to have a, a, a time frame which is roughly from one election to the next, maybe 10 years at maximum. Um, the market, its time frame is usually less than six months. Uh, certainly uh, the next financial year is about as long as it goes. So it can be a bit more strategic than that, but generally it's, it's very short term. The long term and the sustainability issues these days are really about long term issues. These values and visions are set by the community. There is no way that the market or government can do that. If the community is not doing it, then sustainability can't work. Sustainability is constantly uh, being pushed and prodded by community values and visions. So the stories that I tell and others tell involved in the sustainability uh, business generally arise from communities who have grasped a sense of what is going wrong and a different world that they want to see. And the ability to tap into that is fundamental to understanding sustainability. If, it's, if you think it's about making sure the triple bottom line is brought into your financial report, fine. But you're not really understanding it unless you've recognised that powerful role of communities who, after all, are the ones who are setting the long-term direction uh, of, of our society. All the other components have to fit into that. Now, we got involved in WA, in Western Australia, in establishing a sustainability strategy in 2001. It was an election commitment uh, to, to devise one, and the Premier came to see me and said, uh, can you come and uh, help us to do a, a state sustainability strategy? Uh, you're a professor of sustainability, you should know all about these things. And I said, yes, I didn't know how to do a sustainability strategy because no one else had done one at state level. Uh, there were national ones set through that Rio process that I talked about, and local governments had done a bit about it. A few companies were doing things, but uh, to say what the state did, that's, uh, that was a pretty tall order. Uh, but I brought 50 of my students along with me and we, uh, we set up a, an office where they were able to do research from around the world on the innovations that were happening. And we did lots of case studies about local innovations in sustainability just to show that local governments, companies, communities, even state agencies were beginning to show what it meant. They had grasped the vision and were starting to implement it. And so we documented that. As soon as you put on the table the possibilities of economic, social and environmental factors actually working together rather than opposed to each other, 
uh, and people with goodwill start to try and work out what that means, uh, you get magic happening. And that uh, is, is something that I will always remember. Now, when we uh, did our strategy, it actually took most of that three years working at all kinds of levels to resolve what sustainability actually meant. So we worked out in the end that uh, the definition was meeting the needs of current and future generations through a simultaneous uh, achievement of social development, environmental protection and economic prosperity. The key being simultaneous and long-term future generations. And when you get those elements in uh, and, and actually incorporate that into your day-to-day -day activity, things change. We developed uh, 11 principles about how to do it. And uh, I'll just briefly mention a, a couple of them. One was about settlements. Sustainability recognises that the earth can only adjust to a more balanced state if settlements reduce their ecological footprint, that is, less material and energy demands and reduction in waste, while they simultaneously improve their quality of life, health, housing, employment, community. Simultaneous. Secondly, about uh, communities and regions. Sustainability recognises the significance and diversity of community and regions for the management of the earth and the critical importance of sense of place and heritage, buildings, townscapes, landscapes and culture in any plans for the future. And we've never had that kind of uh, integration of, of the social and cultural elements of, of government into the issues of, of long-term futures and, uh, and the development of the economy. And finally, this one, uh, net benefit from development. Sustainability means that all development, particularly development involving extraction of non-renewable resources, we are in Western Australia, that it should strive to provide net environmental, social and economic benefit for future generations. Net benefit. So not minimise the impact, net benefit. Up until then, we've had environmental protection agencies to try and minimise impacts. But net benefit, that's, a, that's a, a lot harder. And that's a very important principle that has underlain our understanding now of the way in which sustainability is working its way through the economy. Charlie Hargraves, in the book The Natural Edge Project, which is an Australian book about sustainability, has this diagram which shows the different waves of innovation uh, since the Industrial Revolution came in the 1780s. The first one being about the Iron Age uh, with uh, water power and mechanisation, textiles and so on. That created a, a certain kind of city, which then became even more industrialised with the steam power, railroad, steel and cotton era in the second wave. The third wave with electricity, chemicals and the internal combustion engine beginning um, appeared in the early part of the 20th century. And the fourth wave we've just really passed out of based on petrochemicals, electronics, aviation and space. Um, this was the kind of city where we've got our uh, very car dependent suburbs, very vulnerable to oil issues of uh, climate change and so on now appearing. The digital age has appeared as the fifth wave and in many ways is now merging into the sixth wave of sustainability. So the issues that are set out there of radical resource productivity, whole system design, biomimicry, green chemistry, industrial ecology, renewable energy, and green nanotechnology. These are new technologies, but they are fundamentally different in the kind of innovation that it is drawing out of us. ET and IT are coming together. So we have very clever ways of saving energy and water, uh, reducing waste. And we are just on the cusp 
of that kind of change as the technologies begin to appear. But it's being driven by community values and visions that are saying that that previous era was destroying us. We couldn't last. The biodiversity was disappearing. We're running out of oil. We're destroying our climate. We can't keep going on those, uh, those waves. They were innovative. They did create wealth. They did give us new kinds of cities and communities. And we're not going to go back to being somehow living in villages in a medieval kind of uh, economy. But we have to move on to a, a very different kind of uh, approach to how we live. And sustainability is, is drawing that out. But it is not a side social movement. It is actually shaping and framing the economy. This is the next age that will define the jobs, the, the output of the economy, how we measure our success. And it is not therefore going to go away as a, some kind of fashion. This is a very fundamental approach now to how we define uh, what we do as a society.